The research station actually grew out of a field station of the late Dr. David Gaskin and his grad students. And after Dr. Gaskin died in 1998, myself and uh, some of his uh, former uh, grad students uh, kept the, the research station going. Uh, so we have uh, multiple functions. It's uh, uh, applied research, uh, but there's also conservation. And of course, education is a, is a big uh, portion of that. We've always tried to work with the local community and try to give them information that they might not already have, plus listen to their own knowledge that they have, the traditional knowledge. I started as um, a research assistant here in 1997 and uh, came back every year and started my own project and then started becoming involved with the basking shark research in 2008, 2009. We were doing a lot of tagging of basking sharks and we recognized that their dorsal fins are really very distinct by individuals. There's some of them, like they have nicks and notches and different shapes and scars. And there's a woman in the UK, Dr. Mobus Gore, who manages a basking shark photo ID catalog for the Eastern North Atlantic. And we thought we would try and start one up here for the Western North Atlantic because there isn't currently one that exists. Um, and so we were using our own photographs for the catalog, but we surveyed just such a small part of the Bay of Fundy. And so we came up with the idea to start out reaching out to other marine users to see if they would like to contribute photographs to the catalogs. So part of the goal of the Shark Identification Network is to promote conservation of sharks through education and outreach of the public and give them a platform to submit uh, photographs of basking sharks to our photo ID catalog. We just focused on the Bay of Fundy, so working with the whale watch operators uh, and fishermen and um, trying to get the, the word out for the Shark Identification Network. And after that, we launched that in 2012, we had people coming to us and saying, well, I've seen a basking shark off of Newfoundland, or I saw a basking shark off of um, the eastern part of Nova Scotia. Are you interested in these sightings? Are you interested in these photographs? And of course we are, because we know the basking sharks move up and down the coast. And so uh, over the last three years, we've expanded the shark identification network to include um, areas basically from the Gulf of Maine all the way up to Newfoundland um, and trying to get any sightings and photographs of basking sharks that we can. So we have a website. It's the Shark Identification Network, just Shark ID network.com and if people come to the the website there um, there's a bunch of things on here so we have a blog um, people can read about our blog which generally gives updates about what kind of settings have been reported some photographs um, to report a sightings you just need to click on report a sighting and um, it's quite easy you just fill out your date as much information as you can so date time where like what were you on a vessel were you on land um, the, where the location, if you have that long, that's amazing. If you don't, uh, you know, you could be like 200 meters off this island. or um, And then there's a way that you can also upload any of your photographs. And that comes directly to me. It shows you all the photographs of the different sharks that have been photographed. Um, it gives you the, the code, the ID code, where it was sighted. Um, and if the photographer wants their name listed, uh, we, we give them the, pho the photograph. And so people submit all these photographs and the dates, and then it comes to us, and we catalog them. So put them into a spreadsheet with all the required information, and then start looking at the dorsal fins and categorizing those. Uh, so just as an example, um, these two photographs here are two sharks. One was taken in 2008, and the other one was taken in 2009. You can see here the shape it's a fairly triangular dorsal fin. It's got small little nicks along the side, a little tiny fold at the top. And so you just carefully go through each one. And here you can see that it has the same fold. It's got the same series of nicks and notches. We have several people look at them to make sure that it's not just one person thinking it's a match, it's several people. And then once it's matched, uh, we, can, we can just give it the same ID. So we have about 125 unique dorsal fins in our catalog and so every time we get a new basking shark we, we catalog it and then when someone has time it, they, we run through each of the existing photographs in our database to see if we can find a match. And then sometimes because they're categorized you can do a bit of a search so if you have a shark that has a funny shaped dorsal fin and you know it has a certain number of nicks or notches you can kind of run through and sort of pick out the, the 
sharks that, are, that have been categorized the same and go through it. At the beginning, we weren't getting a lot of sightings, but as people come to know us a little bit more, we're getting more sightings. Every year we get more sightings from a larger diversity of people that are using, are on the water or beside the water. <laughs>